Yo, yo, what's up, y'all? We are back out here in the shop. Got the fans going. It's crazy hot, but we're going to be taking this PVC pipe, turning it into a Tahitian drum, the Faquete, and just coming along for the ride while I sweat out here, y'all. First step we got here with our PVC pipe. Thankfully, all the previous drums I've made were from this same section. So we're just going to go 14 and a quarter from the base the height of our drum measured out 14 and a quarter all the way around connect the lines and we chop it up just like that now we grab the saw cut off our section we need let's cut this section of pipe we're using Without a doubt, the most manly power tool known to man. The reciprocating saw or the sawzall. Yeah, really make you feel like dirty hair. So, LJ, don't mess this up. Hold it tight. Boom. That's the cut. Now we build the drum. Next step we've got to do is start marking all the holes for where we're going to be mounting the hardware or running the ropes through the drum. So just off of previous experience on the other drums, we're going four inches from the bottom. Now I'll be marking two different measurements. I need two holes fairly close together. Those are going to be one and a quarter inch apart. And then between each of those sets are going to be three and a quarter. So should have six pairs. One, two, three, four, six. So six pairs of these holes. And I also need one hole just in the middle of any of these two sets. Four inches up. It's gonna be our larger sound hole. Find the center line between these two. So three and a quarter, and one and a half plus an eight. Put a center marker, big hole. Easy enough. Measured out. Now we drill. In order for my ropes to fit through here, I need the quarter-inch holes, and then. My larger sound hole here in the middle is going to be one and a half inches. Uh, before I go to drill that bigger sound hole, a couple of things. Uh, this style of drum or this version I've already built two other ones so a lot of trial and error that's how I'm able to spit out the measurements fairly quickly I am only using 8 inch PVC they do make larger ones other folks make their drums out of larger ones uh, but we come to find out that this sound works for us some say it has to be bigger whatever uh, yeah so the measurements a lot of trial and error Remember, measure twice, cut once, but again, this is the third one of this version I'm making. I think we, we got it down fairly well, so let's drill the sound hole. Boom. Ooh, that's, that's hot. Yeah, now we got that. File it all off, clean it up, and we sand. Now, the, uh, the sanding that we're giving this thing, it's not to make it perfect but it's gonna scuff up the surface for our paint to stick later and remove any blemishes that are on here because it was just a scrap piece of pipe with the construction there. Now this next step kind of came out from uh, just thinking with logic. The head that we're using on this drum is a natural skin. So you can imagine natural skin, with the tension of being a drum against these 90 degree curves here, these 90 degree bends, it's going to be fairly rough on it, a sharp corner could tear through the material, 
So I take a round over bit and we round off the top. And it's rounded off, but it makes a big mess. Welcome to the paint booth. <laughs> now, really, just needed something, uh, nothing spectacular going on the, for paint. Just some old rattle can, matte black, because we are throwing a vinyl logo on here. So, let's see. Now, one technique, if you've never used spray paint, some people say it looks cheap, but you can get a decent finish out of it is on your initial spray, as soon as you press, make sure you're not pointed directly at your material. Let it build up that what it would be the steady stream and then drag it across in even strokes like this. Short bursts. Once you get the longer burst, the aerosol tends to run out. Then you get uneven strokes across, thicker parts, thinner parts. And when you get the thicker pieces, that's when you start to get the drip and paint will start to run. Being that we are in the garage, it's kind of hard to tell, but um, in that black finish, Nobody's ever worried about the inside because you won't see it. We let it dry and go work on the decal. Now that everything's dry, what I'm going to be doing is marking on my ring where our turnbuckles are going to go. So I really want the turnbuckle in between each of those bigger gaps. If you remember earlier, it was three and a quarter inches. So go in between each of those, shoot the gap reason I marked it off is because this rope is going to be wrapped tightly around the steel ring. I got the ring one inch bigger than the pipe to have room for not only the rope but also this drum skin that's going on later. We're going to wrap this all around making sure that these go in each spot that I marked and that's how we hook the rope to provide tension on the drum head and tighten up the skin to tune it up. First thing I do is number one, make sure that I've got a good binding or a good melted tip on this parachute cord because the nylon strings on the inside, they just look sloppy when you don't do that. Safety not on the end of that. Now because these turnbuckles are going where I marked each one, I'm going to be starting my knot or starting my wrap somewhere in the center. That way I've got enough windings to support the weight and the tension being pulled down by the turnbuckles. Once I get that knot there to hold it in place, I'll start winding, keeping it extremely tight and neat. Right around this pole, this part does take quite a long time. When I get to the spot of where the turnbuckles are going to be as a placeholder, I just hang it on there once and twice. And back to normal around the pole, around the rod, keeping it as tight as possible. And you just continue the process all the way around. One eternity later. Now, finishing up, what I do is kind of just one single overhand hitch to keep it tight and lock it in place. Make sure it doesn't come loose from there. And 
that on the end and run it all the way down just to block it from coming loose. I have started some prep work here just to make it run a little smoother. Got a drum, I already ran my rope through one of the holes with a knot on the back side to keep it from pulling through. Nothing crazy, just a big knot. Got my ring that you guys saw do earlier, and then the inner ring for the drum head. So I've had this drum head, it's goat skin, the thick one, soaking in water. That way it makes it more pliable. So I'm gonna dry it off a little bit prior to putting it on. Just a jump towel because it is goat skin. This really sucks doing by yourself. If you notice, I have the turnbuckles facing up just to make it easier to get through this portion. And then what we're going to do is face them downward and also align them correctly in between the big gaps. You're gonna want these pretty much as big as they can go. That way, when it comes time to tune, when it comes time to tune, you have plenty of, of threads to tune off of. And you just weave this thing. Now that the skin is set, I'm going to really crank down on these ropes try to get it as tight as possible before we even adjust any of the turnbuckles. And then once it's all tightened up by hand, get a big old knot in the back, just to kind of hold your place while you mess with everything else. And as you can see, that is not the tune we want. So we're gonna keep tightening as it dries. We're even gonna let it sit, dry out completely before we do a final tune. But for now, we're just gonna keep adjusting and tweaking these ropes so that it has a good place to set overnight. Back at it next morning, skin has dried all the way. You can see, not tuned at all. So what we go and do is just tighten them up, basically like a lug nut pattern. And with six, just pick a starting point and skip every other one and I do it even five turns small increments until I get the final tune and we're going to be progressively tuning this over the next couple days in small increments to slowly stretch the skin so it's all done. All ready. So it'll only get better from there. And that's it for the build. Like I said, we're gonna progressively tighten this thing up as the days go on. Once that's all done, I'll trim up that excess skin that's coming around the rings at the top. And um, yeah, it's gonna be a while till this one is like completely done. So if you really want to know what they can sound like, check out this sound clip of my boy Simi. Uh, he's really tearing it up on the Faquetes. And I appreciate y'all for stopping through. So for more videos on building stuff right here, subscribe right there. And again, y'all, thanks for swinging by. Until next time, peace.